I'm Marta, this is the Dolls Rescue Channel. Thank you for watching and today I'm showing you my smart doll, bicycling smart doll. We're riding 70s style. It's hot out here. Very hot. I left my helmet at home purposely. Um, we'll show you the helmet at the end. Hope you enjoy this video. I, as always, have like five projects going on here and some waiting in the wing. Here's where I am. I want to take this uh, shirt in more. I think it should be, you know, I don't want it so tight that it rubs, but I don't want it loose. I don't know. I'm, I might not take it in more. I'm looking at it. It's standing on the table. I'm looking at it. I have a stain resistant pants underneath her shorts, her bike shorts. And, no, and I have Velcro in the back because I don't want a um, snap rubbing her back or rubbing anywhere. Or if it comes open, the Velcro, because the soft side is closest to the body, will be the only thing rubbing her, not a snap that could really do some damage and I didn't know it happened. Her helmet, oh God, I love this helmet. I um, wanted to show you, stand right there, sweetheart. I um, did not double over the elastic and I sewed, I didn't just sew the line and come back. I did a box um, stitch, that is you do a square with an X across it and you use larger stitches and the reason is you break less of the rubber band or the rubber inside and with it further apart um, you're covering more and it's more likely to uh, stay. Darren, I love, love, love this um, helmet, but I ask him, oh, she's got a pink outfit. Could you make her a pink helmet? <laughs> so right away he went over and got the pink and started printing and I wanted to show you how these come off the printer and what Darren has to do to uh, clean this up. I'm gonna let him show you and tell you. Let me move some stuff back for the projects I'm working on so he can show you he already started. And I said, oh wait, let's do that on film. This is as it comes off the printer. Um, what you see here underneath is called support. Uh, a 3D printer, it's like a hot glue gun and it just ex excrudes plast hot plastic in with a little tiny nozzle, 0.4 millimeters usually, um, and builds it up layer after layer. What what people don't understand is, is that if you have something that, that has what they call an overhang, say this is your print bed and it's printing this, it can't just print plastic out here in the middle of the air. Um, because the plastic will just fall to the to the base and cause what they call stringing. So you have to have support, and that support is filament that gets printed that you don't use isn't part of the final model, but it's a it's like a well it's a support so that the filament um, has a place to uh, to rest. So you can see, for example, on the bottom of this helmet, there's uh, a, a overhang. It's kind of a, a big. Uh, bridge there. You're talking about filament. in between the yeah, hair, here. Yeah, here in this, this hole here when it's printing, this piece of the helmet underneath has no support. It's just printing in midair. So what it did here, the slicing software does this, it added all of this material here that's real kind of it, foamy printed. It's it's printed not densely, but, but as loosely as it can and still support so that you can remove it. Of course, it creates a rough texture underneath there and you have to file or cut or, or live with it. it. That's just kind of limitations of 3D printing. And you're always trying to build models that have as little or no support as possible so that you don't have to deal with it. Anyway, so here we are and it's just a matter of just coming in here and tearing the, this off bit by bit and people ask can you do something with this we save it you really can't do much with this there are some people who have um, uh, big melting pots and they they remake the filament 
but to be useful, you'd have to um, have a lot of wasted of the same color. Otherwise, you just kind of have a, a muddy mishmash. It's like, imagine taking every little bit of scrap paint you've ever had and throwing it in a bucket, and you end up with just kind of a gross, muddy brown. Um, and so. it's not like crayons that you can melt and stir and stop. It, it would have to blend completely before you make right, it. Right, right, right. So um, this stuff is actually, this we use a lot of PLA, which is probably the most environmentally friendly material. It's made uh, with uh, basically uh, cornstarch, and, and as I understand it, and which also means that if left out in the UV sunlight, that it will decompose quicker than some other filaments. However, we've had that one in the window. Yeah, for... that's what they say, but we've got a piece in the window. But, you know, windows are made to block a certain amount of UV. So this is just the process here, and we just keep tearing off. Okay, so I've pulled all the support material off. I don't know if you can see down in here. This is obviously the inside here when it's printed would be a lot of support needed underneath there. There's a big, big area here and it's pretty rough. I've smoothed it out and knocked off most of the nerves. So Does anybody else see the face in there? <laughs> <laughs> so now the next thing is filing. The, the downside of filing, you think, oh, just file it and smooth it. It's not like wood so much um, this nice shiny texture will be gone if I rub the file over it it'll just be a, a, a rough surface um, uh, anyway so what I'll what I'll do you can see here there's some some what they call um, base material here I'll, I'll uh, knock that off with the big file here can you show that wasp looking mess so yeah this is what the support this is what the in, the support on the inside helmet look like for example you can see all of this here this grid here is what touched the the, the model we want and then this is all the material building up to that and uh, it's just it tries to come up with a, the su support that it needs for as little using as little material as possible it's really really thin and um, quite breakable uh, and Marna was saying it looked kind of like a wasp, or it's like, like a, a brain maybe, or? What the, yeah, it does look kind of like a brain. I was thinking the mud daubers, you know, yeah. how they get on the house. Yeah. So anyway, what we're gonna do here, now of course along here where the people can see, where it's kind of visible from the outside, there's some rough texture. So I'll sit here and file this down, just to kind of smooth it out so she's not scratching her doll, so there's no sharp points. And then uh, I'll have to take this smaller file here, this, these areas here that I was talking about. Uh, I'll have to come in here and file these. And Sorry, kind of... I'm the cameraman. Well, that's okay. It, we, we've got to hear where I can't see what I'm doing because the camera and the camera can't see because i got to turn trying to see. Um, How, what was the print time on these? This is almost 10 hours to print one of these on our fast printer. Uh, I, it'd probably be a, a, a full day on, on some of the other, more than a day on the other two printers. Um. helmets. I love this doll. I'm excited to have the seat and this helmet. I hope you've enjoyed this video on the process of getting her here. I'm hot and I'm tired. It was a good ride. We're going to have a contest and the contest is pick a date in these comments and we're only going to open this for three days past the day that this is up so that you can't come back and add. In the comments, name the date that you think that Genesis will have 100 miles riding on our bikes with us. 
Thank you for watching the Dolls Rescue Channel. Please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe.